Hi, I'm Kevin at Micro Measurements, and today I'm going to show you how to install a pre wired strain gauge on a copper specimen. Now, uh, there are just an infinite number of materials that strain gauges could be installed on, and uh, the surface preparation can vary for each one. Uh, the, surface, the standard surface preparation techniques for steel or aluminum, which are very, very common, may not be the same on certain other materials, and copper is a good example of that. Now, for information on what we recommend at Micromeasurements on the correct surface preparation techniques, you can visit the website and go to Bulletin B-129 Surface Preparation for Strain Gauge Installations and see a list of materials and it will recommend the techniques and in fact I'm going to follow the techniques that we recommend here for copper. So the gauge this is my copper specimen. Uh, the gauge that I'm going to put on this is a pre-cabled pre strain gauge. Uh, this is one of our C2A. This one happens to be uh, a, a quarter inch gauge length and uh, we'll start with the surface preparation. So the first step for copper is going to be to, gre to degrease the surface. I'm going to use Micromeasurement's CSM3 degreaser. Very uh, powerful solvent that does not leave any type of residue on the specimen. I'm going to wipe an area that's much larger than the location where I'm going to place the strain gauge because later I don't want to drag any grease or uh, surface contaminants. You can see even though something looks clean, you're going, to, you're going to get something off of it as you degrease it. So I'm going to discard these and uh, do it a couple times until that comes up clean. So we call it degreasing, but uh, this is going to get any kind of residue, and it really needs to be done even if you think the surface is clean. It's good, good practice. The next step is going to be a dry abrasive. This is going to be done with uh, wet or dry silicon carbide paper, SCP-2. Micromeasurements SCP2. This is 320 grit. I'm going to abrade part of the surface here. I'm not trying to remove any thickness. I'm just trying to roughen the surface to prepare for strain gauge bond. So not, not a lot of sanding is necessary. Now you do use Micromeasurements uh, in prep conditioner A with uh, copper. That is a, a recommended surface cleanser. So we're going to uh, use a cotton tipped applicator, scrub in the direction that I sanded. And this is going to remove some oxidation uh, from the copper as well, as well as clean the, the surface there where we sanded it. wiping technique that we teach, very important, is you want to wipe in one direction only. You want to start on one side of your gauge area, wipe in one direction all the way clear, and then go back, place another dry gauze pad in the cleaned area and wipe the opposite direction. Now you can see the effect of the uh, M prep conditioner A on copper, you, if you can uh, see this in the camera, you can see where it did in fact remove some oxidation that was present. Now, with copper, there's one more sanding step. The 320 grit was to smooth the surface a little bit. Now I'm going to do a wet abrasive. This is, again, using the uh, M-Prep conditioner A. I'm going to wet the surface. But this time, I'm going to abrade the surface with Micromeasurements SCP-3. This is also a wet or dry silicon carbide paper, but this is 400 grit or abrasive. And this is going to give us the correct surface finish uh, for the adhesive to get the best bond possible on the copper. So again, I'm just roughening the surface, not doing any really heavy sanding. I'm going to use the same drying technique as before. Fold the gauze sponge, put it on one location, wipe all the way off the beam. Now I can, I can switch to a clean one or just fold it over and then go the other direction. You see, that way I'm wiping one time through the cleaned area. I'm not going back and forth which can drag contaminants right back into the area that you clean. Now, a couple more steps before we're ready to position our gauge is going to wet, wet the surface and again with, with the M-Prep conditioner A. Now this time, I'm not going to sand, I'm just going to scrub the surface again. 
and this is to remove any residues from uh, the sanding. Of course, a little more oxidation. Copper oxidizes very quickly, and what we recommend is that once you finish the surface preparation, you need to install the strain gauge within 10 minutes' time. The strain gauge needs to be bonded to the surface with the adhesive curing within 10 minutes' time after you finish this surface preparation. Okay, I'm going to switch to a clean surface now that I'm getting close to the end of the Now, often in strain gauge uh, work on steel or aluminum, your final step would be to neutralize the surface with M-Prep Neutralizer 5A. With copper, we're not going to do that. The ammonia that is in this neutralizer is going to cause the surface to become uh, uh, oxides to form, and so we're not going to use it. It is not recommended. You won't see it in any of our bulletins uh, for use with copper. Now, we still want to try to raise the uh, surface pH from the acidic cleaner. So to do that with copper, what we recommend using is distilled water. I happen to have some distilled water here. So I'm just going to put a few drops on the surface. And again, we're going to scrub it with a cotton-tipped applicator. And this will be our final step in clean preparing the surface for the strain gauge. Same drying technique, start on one end, wipe through the cleaned area, switch it to a clean side, wipe through the cleaned area the opposite way. Now this surface is ultra clean, it's got the right surface finish, uh, we know our strain gauge is going to stick. So I'm going to set that aside for just a second while we uh, position our strain gauge. To do that, I'm going to use a glass plate and a good cleaner for that, you know, fingerprints on it, things that would contaminate the bonding side of the strain gauge. I'm going to remove that with uh, a few drops of the Neutralizer 5A. So I'm just going to wipe this down and dry it off. Now I've got a clean surface because the bonding side of the strain gauge is going to lay against that surface. So we don't want anything on it that's going to contaminate the gauge, cause it to fail later. This is our C2A strain gauge. It's the 250LW. I'm going to remove it from the package, lay it out on the glass. And handling tape that I'm going to use, this is to pick up and then accurately position the strain gauge. It's called the PCT2M. Not really any accuracy required at this step. Uh, the gauge is now sealed down to the glass and I can pick it up. If alignment marks were necessary, I would have burnished those on about midway through the surface preparation. And here I'm going to align the gauge in the axial direction. And seal it down to the surface. You notice that the tape does cover uh, the very fine that are uh, on the C2A strain gauges. To prepare the gauge for bonding, I'm now going to lift this, and I can lift it just past those wires a little bit. Actually, the adhesive will help to seal those wires down to the surface, which is a good thing. It'll help make it a little more rugged. Now, to bond our string gauge today, I'm going to use uh, M-Bond 200 along with the included Catalyst C. M-Bond 200 is good for uh, very fast installations of string gauges. It's good for room temperature, uh, cold temperatures. Uh, but not cryogenic. Uh, it's, it's good down for, for about minus 30 Fahrenheit all the way up to about 195 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also not the adhesive that you would use if you were in a high humidity environment. And if you were to use this uh, in an environment that's going to be exposed to outdoor weather, you need to pick a, an appropriate coating for the strain gauge because this will uh, deteriorate with humidity and moisture. So it needs to be protected. Now to use the Embalm 200, 
we use catalyst C. This just speeds up the reaction. This simply uh, uh, is not a two component adhesive. This uh, catalyst is just to uh, increase the cure time, make it very fast. Now you notice that I wiped off most of the catalyst from the brush. I just want a very, very fine coating on here, just enough to wet the surface. If I see drops of this running off, that's way too much because in fact, I have to wait now for one minute for this to completely dry. The reason is that this uh, Catalyst C, the chemical in it that is the catalyst is suspended in alcohol. Uh, the alcohol is just a carrier, so we want that to evaporate off and condense out the, uh, the true catalyst on the surface. I'm going to wait one minute. Okay, that's been about one minute wait time. I can see that the uh, catalyst is dry. Now here's a tip with M1200. These uh, bottles will get old adhesive that you may have used a couple of weeks ago that remains in the little capillary here in the, in the spout. So it's a good idea to take a, a gauze pad and just squeeze out the first few drops of that uh, and throw it away. That way you know that uh, the next drops that come out of there are going to be fresh fresh stuff, not stuff that's been sitting in the, uh, in the spout for a couple of weeks. So to prepare for this, you got to be pretty quick. Uh, within a few seconds, you need to get the adhesive down and get pressure on the strain gauge. So I'm going to have a gauze pad folded, ready to go in, in one hand. I'm going to place a drop of adhesive behind the gauge. That's a pretty good sized drop because I'm going to use it to hold those wires down as well. Now I'm going to lay the gauge back over and to seal it down I'm going to swipe this gauze pad right along the length of the string gauge and then within just a few seconds I'm going to get thumb pressure on that on that gauge. I'm going to hold this for at least one minute. Okay so this has been one minute of thumb pressure and now that the, uh, the adhesive is basically cured, I need to wait another two minutes at least before I remove the handling tape. Now at this point, the gauge is bonded and we got that done within 10 minutes of the final surface preparation. So we're not in any danger of the, of the copper oxidizing or affecting our, our bond. Uh, this, this is done, so uh, now I'm gonna wait two minutes before I remove the handling tape. Okay, now two minutes has expired. I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, handling tape to leave the bonding gauge in place. Now, you'll notice the technique. I don't want to pull this straight off. The string gauge bond is going to be delicate in the, in the pull or the, you know, um, the uh, lifting direction. What you want with the string gauge is an extremely strong shear bond, and this is resisting sliding on the surface, which it will have. But you do have to be careful in the in the peel direction. It, it, it can be weak. So what we recommend is that you pull the tape back straight against itself, fold it 180 degrees back, and just kind of slide it along the strain gauge and the wires until it, you reach the end. Okay, now given just a few more minutes, uh, if I don't disturb it, these wires will be adhered very well to the surface and then I can anchor this uh, heavier lead wire to the beam and uh, we're ready to, to test in a lab environment. If I were going to use this in a adverse environmental conditions, high humidity, moisture, dirt, uh, uh, solvent, any kind of chemical environment, then I need to put a coating over the gauge uh, to protect it. And that's how you would install a strain gauge on a copper specimen.